All right, let's dive in. Today, we're taking a deep dive into low volatility investing. We've got this fascinating paper that just came out last month by Venner Linden, Sobhag, and Van Vliet. And they really get into how investors can, well, leverage this thing called the low volatility anomaly. Yeah, it's a really interesting area. What's exciting is they go beyond just explaining what it is. They actually lay out five different strategies. We're talking about ways to potentially boost returns, build a smarter asset allocation, maybe even target those market neutral returns. So yeah, buckle up. Could be a wild ride. Well, maybe not wild in the traditional sense. That's kind of the point, right? Yeah. Well, low volatility is all about stocks that are, well, less volatile. They often outperform those high flying roller coaster stocks. It's a bit counterintuitive, but the data is pretty clear. So you're telling me playing it cool and steady, that's the key. That's not what they teach you in Finance 101. But then why isn't everyone doing this? If it's such a sure thing, why even bother talking about it? That is the million dollar question. The paper points out that low volatility stocks, they tend to lag behind when the market's on a tear. You know, those big booming bull markets. And that can be frustrating for investors, especially if they're chasing those sky high returns or being measured against a benchmark. So it's the tortoise and the hare all over again. Mm. Slow and steady wins the race, but it's not always the most exciting. But that's where these five strategies come in, right? All about how to use low vol without, you know, getting left in the dust. Absolutely. This paper goes way beyond just buy and hold. They explore how to use low vol not just to manage risk, but to really enhance returns, tailor investments to different goals. Thank you for tuning in to Quantopian's Quant Radio, your AI-driven podcast exploring everything related to quantitative finance. If you enjoy this episode, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay updated on future releases. For more quant-focused content, join us at community.quantopian.com. There you can explore a wealth of resources, connect with fellow quants, engage in insightful discussions, and enhance your skills through our extensive range of online courses. Quant Radio is intended to help people develop their knowledge and skills in quant finance. This podcast is not intended to provide investment advice. And now, back to the episode. Okay, before we get into the strategies themselves, mm -hmm. this anomaly thing, is this a new discovery? Oh, it's not brand new, not at all. The paper actually cites studies going back decades. And the anomaly, it seems to hold up across different markets, different time periods. It's pretty persistent. Wow. So not just a fluke. That's good to know. All right, let's get into it. What's the first strategy these researchers came up with? How do we start putting this low volatility anomaly to work? They call it the Enhanced Low Volatility Strategy, or Low Vol Plus for short. This is where things get interesting. They combined low volatility with two other factors that investors love, momentum and value. Momentum and value. Now, those are terms I recognize. So we're not just picking, you know, sleepy stocks anymore. We're looking for ones with a little pep in their step. Exactly. Low Vol Plus is about finding those hidden gems, not only calm and steady, but also show signs of being undervalued. And they've got some positive price momentum behind them. Okay, I like it. I like it. How does it actually work in practice? Do I need a PhD to figure this out? No PhD required. Think of it like this. You start with a pool of the 1,000 largest U.S. stocks, right? Filter out the 500 most volatile ones, the ones with those big price swings. Then from those remaining 500, you pick the top 100. You base this on a combination of their net payout yield, a measure of how much they return to investors, and their price momentum over the past year. Okay, so two-step process. First, weed out the wild ones. Then look for those cool, calm, and collected stocks. Ones that are showing signs of good value, positive price movement, got it. But does it actually work? Well, the research suggests it does. From 1990 to 2023, this enhanced strategy yielded an average annual return of 12.5%. Hold on, 12.5. What was the market doing during that time? Just for comparison. The market, let's say the S&P 500, returned an average of 10.4% per year. And here's the kicker. Lobo Plus didn't just beat the market, it did so with a better risk-adjusted return. We measure that with something called the Sharpe Ratio. Ah, uh, the Sharpe Ratio, the gold standard. It tells you how much return you get for each unit of risk. So Lobo Plus outperformed, but did it in a smarter, more efficient way. Okay, I'm starting to see the appeal here. What else can we do with this low volatility magic? What's next on the list? All right, so let's think bigger picture now. How does low volatility investing fit into your overall investment strategy? You know, like how you spread your money across different assets, stocks, bonds, that kind of thing. Like the classic 60-40 portfolio, 60% stocks for growth, 
40% bonds for stability. Exactly. That's the one. The researchers wanted to see what happens if you take a chunk of that 60-40 portfolio and you replace it with this low vol plus strategy we talked about. Does it actually make a difference? That's the question, isn't it? Their analysis showed that even a small allocation, like 15%, shifted over to low vol plus could actually boost returns and without significantly increasing risk. So a little low vol plus goes a long way. What about the sharp ratio? Did that improve too? Yes, it did, even with that small allocation. The portfolio with the low vol plus had a higher sharp ratio than the plain old 60-40. Okay, so once again, low volatility leads to better returns. Huh. And better risk-adjusted returns. Gotta love that. What's the next strategy they looked at? This one's for the more adventurous investors out there. The ones who want to maybe amp up their returns. We're talking about using leverage to, you know, really harness the power of low vol. Leverage. That's a word that can make some people sweat. It all depends on your risk tolerance, right? Exactly. So how does leverage fit into all of this? Remember we talked about low volatility stocks sometimes lagging behind, especially in those really strong bull markets? Well, leverage can help with that. The paper looked at two ways to essentially boost the low vol plus portfolio. So it's risk level measured by something called a beta matches the market's overall risk level. So we're trying to dial up the risk a little bit to be more in line with the market. What are the two ways to do that? First one's pretty straightforward. You borrow money to invest more heavily in those low vol plus stocks. Second one uses something called equity market index futures, which lets you basically gain exposure to the market without buying all the stocks directly. A little more complex, but similar outcome. Okay, so two paths to the same destination, amplifying the low vol plus strategy. But does it actually lead to better returns? That's the key, right? And the results were pretty impressive. Both methods, borrowing or using futures, they significantly outperform the market. Even with the added leverage. Yep, and the sharp ratio stays strong, so higher returns, but still with solid risk-adjusted returns. That's pretty compelling. Seems like leverage when used carefully. And with a low volatility approach can be a powerful tool. I'm seeing the versatility here. It's not just about playing it safe. It's about, you know, potentially enhancing returns in different ways. What else did they find? The next strategy is a really interesting one. It's all about aiming for what we call absolute returns. Think of it like trying to get positive returns on average, regardless of what the market's doing. Absolute returns. That sounds almost mythical. Is that even possible? It's definitely challenging, not going to lie. Hedge funds, some sophisticated investors, that's their goal, to be as uncorrelated with the market as possible. So how do you do that using low volatility? Those two concepts seem almost opposite. You're right. It's a bit counterintuitive. The paper suggests two methods. First one involves what we call shorting the market, basically betting against it. You can use those index futures we talked about earlier. So if the market goes down, your short position goes up and vice versa. Exactly. A way to potentially profit from a decline. Interesting. What's the second method? It's more targeted. It's about shorting individual stocks, specifically speculative stocks. These are stocks with lots of volatility, weak payout yields, poor momentum, basically the opposite of what we want in low vol plus. They're like the daredevils of the stock market, high risk, high reward. And by shorting them, you're betting they'll come crashing down. Mm. But did these market neutral strategies actually work? They ran simulations using historical data in both approaches, shorting the market or shorting those speculative stocks. They achieved positive average annual returns and their sharper ratios were better than just a plain stock portfolio. Wow, so even aiming for zero correlation with the market, you can still generate positive returns with good risk reward balance. This low volatility thing just keeps getting more and more interesting. What's the last strategy they explored? So the last strategy, this one's all about something I think everyone wants, downside protection trying to, you know, soften the blow when the market takes a dip. Downside protection. I like the sound of that already. Nobody likes seeing their portfolio in the red. So how does low volatility help with that? The paper looked at two different approaches. Both of them use a combination of what we call long and short positions. The first one is a 30% long position in low volatility stocks, you know, those nice steady performers. And you combine that with a negative 50% short position in those speculative stocks we mentioned before. Right, the daredevils. Exactly. The second approach, you bump up the long position in low volatility stocks to 70% and combine that with a negative 100% short position in the overall market using those index futures. So in both cases, we're basically betting on low vol to hold up while also betting against either those speculative stocks or the whole market. Yeah. If the market drops, those short positions help offset the losses, right? 
That's the idea. And what's interesting is the research found both strategies were really good at reducing downside risk. Actually, they outperformed a more traditional approach using put options, both in terms of returns and the sharp ratio. Hold on. So you're saying these low volatility strategies could be a better way to protect your portfolio than using put options? They can be, especially for like those moderate market declines. Put options are more like insurance. You pay a premium. They protect you if the market absolutely tanks. Right. Those worst case scenarios. These long, short, low volatility strategies, they're more dynamic. So it's about picking the right tool for the job. Put options for the meltdown, low vol strategies for more everyday ups and downs. Yeah. Wow. This has been an incredible deep dive. I've learned so much about low volatility investing. We started thinking it was all about playing it safe. But clearly, there's a lot more to it than that. It really flips the script on that idea that uh, more risk equals more reward. Low volatility can be a way to enhance returns, navigate different markets, even protect your portfolio. Absolutely. So if we had to sum it all up, what's the key takeaway here? What should our listeners remember about low volatility investing? I think the big one is the low volatility effect is real. It's not going anywhere, and it gives investors a ton of opportunities. It's not just about buying some low vol stocks and crossing your fingers. It's about really understanding how these strategies work mm. and how they can help you reach your goals. Thinking outside the beta box, you always like to leave our listeners with a question to ponder. What's the one we should all be asking ourselves after this deep dive? Well, given everything we've talked about, I think the question is, could ignoring low volatility be the biggest mistake investors are making? Hmm, that's a good one. It really makes you think. And for anyone who wants to learn even more, definitely check out the full paper by Vander Linden, Sopag, and Van Vliet. Tons of great insights in there, way more than we could cover today. It's the perfect starting point for anyone serious about low volatility investing. All right, that's it for today's deep dive, the low volatility anomaly from misunderstood to master strategy. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and as always, happy investing.